Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Travis. My dad over there, his name is Rick. And today we are in Three Points, Arizona. And we found a 1949 Dodge, so check it out. So this 1949 Dodge truck is owned by a guy named Joe here in Three Points. Go drove it for a few years and it got a flat and that was the end of it. This tire is off the bead completely and the other one is completely shredded to nothing. So I'm guessing that was the flat there. Freaking mirror is cool. It's even still a six volt system. Never even converted it to 12 volts. And um, if you look in here, you can see the battery. Uh, this is still a six volt battery. Why is there four? If it's a six volt, wouldn't there they be They had an eight caps? volt battery in it. Oh, okay, yeah, this is an eight volt battery. I remember I was telling you the eight volt it's kind of, they, they used to put eight volt batteries in the six volt cars because they get a little more cranking out of them. A little more oomph? Yeah. It won't blow yeah. the lights out? Mm -mm. Really? Mm -mm. That's what they told me they used to do in the day. Huh. <laughs> They'd put an eight volt battery in. I didn't know that. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, because usually a 12 volt battery will have six caps. A six volt has three caps. So Each has cap four represents caps. two volts. Right. Obviously, she's a manual. I do not know what kind of transmissions these had, if they're a three-speed, four-speed. Uh, well, usually if it's on the tree, three on the tree, right? I'm assuming it's a three-speed. Taking a look here at the mileage, it says 20,000. Don't know if that's 120 or really 20. I doubt it's actually 20,000 original miles. <laughs> the only thing here is your cigarette lighter. Isn't that funny? And then you have your speedometer, odometer, and then the rest of your gauges and your, uh, your pullouts. Check the gas in here. I do smell some bad gas. I don't know how full it is or not, but I think there's definitely a little bit in there. Look at this cap, look how huge this thing is. Let's take a peek under the hood here and see what we're working with. These came with a flathead inline six. I believe it's a 230, 230 cubic inch, um, if I'm not mistaken. They use these on the cars and the trucks. I wonder if I can lay this over all the way or if I'm gonna... I don't know. Guess it'll stay there. All right, check it out. It's pretty original. Now this thing is bone stock, never been touched, but I'm just looking for anything major that's missing that's gonna really stop us from getting it running. Um, it looks like our coil is there. A good thing I did bring a six volt battery because otherwise you'd have to put a 12 volt coil. What about that generator? <laughs> that would have to be changed. Yeah. It's, these are six volt positive ground trucks. I and mean, I don't know what you would damage with the uh, charging system because this is obviously a six volt generator. And here's your six volt voltage regulator. All of this is still hooked up as it was. Nothing has been touched on this other than a uh, extra carburetor. Not sure what that's about, but I'm sure we'll figure out why somebody did that here soon. Our spark plug wires are there, our distributors there, our vacuum advances there, our auxiliary oil filters there, generator, all the wiring, nothing has been touched. We even got a belt on it, radiators in it. Look at the tank on that thing. That's beefy right there. Let's see if there's any fluid in there. Let's see if there's any coolant. She is bone dry, absolutely bone dry. It's to be expected. All right, let's check the oil before we do anything. Let's just see if it has oil in it at all. All right, it's pretty dark. It's up to the full mark. Oh, look, it tells you the capacity right there. Five quarts, ain't that nice? That's a good sign. It's got oil in it. I want to go to the other side and see if the uh, linkage on the carburetor is locked up. Somebody painted some kind of flag on this hood. What is that, a British flag? I don't know. I'm going to move this carburetor. It was sitting down in there, wasn't it? Yeah, it was sitting in there. I'm just going to set it right here on this running board. Okay. I'm trying to be easy with this hood. Even with that arm there, the hood is like almost shut still. I can't even get in there, so... Somebody had put... This is a uh, newer style fuel filter, but, I mean, it's not that new. Look at those hoses. I mean, it's definitely many years old. There's your original fuel filter, the... Uh, glass bowl style fuel filter but somebody's somebody has cut this fuel line to run a modern fuel filter that one was probably leaking those glass bowl filters have a bad problem with leaking this is nice because we can just hook a hose up to this that makes things pretty easy um, mm. froze 
might yeah. want to start spraying stuff down. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think that's a good idea. This looks like an oil, uh, oil line for that. Have to watch out for that. We're gonna go ahead and zip these butterfly doors up because I'm sick of opening them and shutting them. Up. Hold that belt and I'll... Yeah, I saw it. Did you? Yeah, I'll hold that belt. Oh, man. Hold on, let me... Oh, it turned. Oh, it did? Okay. So yeah, we're good. it definitely turned. I saw it. Oh, we're good. Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and start sweeping this off. Yeah. Some Marvelius on the linkage on the carburetor, and it's not locked up now, uh, so that's good. We're just sweeping off some of this rat blades. When we go to take these plugs out, I don't want to make the situation worse by letting this down in there. Right? Makes more work out. Get that crap off there. I don't know. Can you see over there? I can't see. It looked, felt like it was. It's yeah. Come on. All right. Oh, you're gonna want to film them spark plugs. Them look are BF Goodrich. I've never seen no BF Goodrich spark. Oh, man, I'm trying to be really easy with these spark plug wires because we we gotta reuse them. I mean, this has to start the truck. I don't want to break them. Push this stuff off of the top of there. Two things I wanted to show you. This I love seeing. Manufactured for Chrysler Corporation, Detroit, USA. This has got to be the original carburetor, Carter carburetor. And the second thing is over here. If you take a look at that spark plug real close, look at that. B. F. Goodrich. Those have got to be either the originals or very early replacements. That is so cool. And then another problem that we're going to have to solve is over here. Um, this is the exact same problem we had when we were doing that 61 Apache. This is the high pressure line that comes into the uh, fuel filter housing. And then this is the return line. Obviously, you can see it's broke. So when we start it up, if it's got oil pressure, it's going to come right out of that hole. So I think I have a fuel hose big enough to fit over this, and I'm going to just try and run it back into the oil fill hole so it can just cycle through because we're in the middle of nowhere. And when I say we're in the middle of nowhere, we're in the middle of nowhere. We're in three points. There's no McDonald's. There's no Walmarts. There's no Costco's. There's no nothing. Nothing. So we got to start this thing with zero parts, like literally zero parts. You see those little white dots on top of that mountain? Right there. That's Kitt Peak Observatory. Uh, that's where they observe stars and the galaxies and whatnot. But right now we're observing this 49 Dodge. Yeah, we need to go ahead and get this cleaned away from these plugs as good as possible and go ahead and douse them down. Because mm -hmm. they're going to... The way they design this, it it holds water. And it makes them spark plugs a problem to get out of there. Yeah, here, let me get this one real quick. It's right there. Here, you blew a turd down in there. <laughs> oh, I got it. This battery can go the same way as nothing. This one is. I'm just gonna hook that battery up with those jumper cables. Uh, okay, it looks like all the spark plugs are gonna come out. Sweet. So I'm not gonna pull them out until we see that it spins over. Then once it spins over, then we'll see if we pull them and we got compression. There's a cable with no end and then there's a 
a negative cable with a battery end on it. But Dad said that this one is the one going to the starter. Um, and then the positive obviously goes to the frame. So um, I'm going to razor off some of that. Because I can't get a good bite on it with my jumpers. Yeah, as soon as we see it crank, I'll pull in plugs out of there. And then we can check it for compression. Okay. See if we got... All right, so this other one with the end on it is going where? Nowhere? Um, no, it doesn't go anywhere, that other one. Just lay, I don't know, I don't understand why it's unhooked. It looks good to me. But the one with no end, it's going to the starter? That's the one going to the starter. All right. And this one, I mean, it looks factory. It's all bolted to the frame and everything. All right, I'm gonna try and touch this and see what happens. I know. Well, it's seemingly hooked up. Hit that starter and see if it'll... Ready? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's even going all the way down. Well, it's the button's going. I can see it. I can see it pushing. Where's your marble? Uh, it's on the front of the, on the brick. Oh, okay. Yeah, let me spray that down a little bit. Okay. Need to check and see if there's any voltage down there to it. Got the voltmeter here testing for voltage at the starter. Um, this is the cable that is hooked to our battery positive, negative, wait a minute, the negative would I'd put to the, uh, there. You want the negative on the starter. Right. C 6.5 volts. We're getting a perfect 6 volts. Alright, you want to hit it now? Yeah, let's see if, see if it disappears. No. I don't think the key has to be on to start no. I mean to crank I mean yeah but we're not losing we're not losing our six and a half volts it's well I don't know if we're uh, going far enough with the arm we could be stopped dead in our tracks here not too sure uh, this is getting power and basically your foot pushes from in there pushes that you are the solenoid so this is a cover and we're gonna try and take this cover off to see if those contacts are dirty, if they're making contact, or what's going on. Because if this starter doesn't, uh, if this starter isn't going to work, we're sort of dead in the water right now. Hooked up to a 12 volt battery. We're going to try and kind of maybe shock the system, see if that works. Because a 6 volt starter will work fine on 12 volts. So, um, see if that does anything before we go doing other stuff. Got the screws out of this. We were going to take the starter off, but it, it's going to be a way bigger job. It's two bolts, but you can't hardly get to them. So this is what gets pushed down right here. Let's see here. So this pushes down and engages with this, and you can see it's it's pretty dirty and filthy. So I'm hoping that we're just not getting a good connection. Be able to hook up a battery cable on that one, touch it to the battery, and it should spin. Okay. Ready? Mm -hmm. Oh, there it goes. All right, do it again. Well, there was something. All right. Nothing. Is it on that? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I think we're losing our connection oh. here. I hear something. Yeah. We're losing our connection here. Hold on. Let's see if I can get a better one right here. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. I was a little worried. So, 
All right, let's try and see if this thing's got compression. You might want to put a little bit more bellies down there while we're cranking it. So I'm just putting my fingers over these holes while we're cranking it to see if we have any compression at all. And while I'm doing that, go ahead and subscribe now to the channel because only about 5% of our viewers are subscribers. But a lot of people are returning viewers, so we'd like to see that number a little bit higher. And at the end of the video, I'll be talking about some updates on the 1960 El Camino and the 1946 International that you guys are going to want to hear about. But in other words, we have oil pressure. I still have to route that hose into the oil fill hole. And also, here's a better look at those BF Goodrich plugs. Ain't that cool? So what we're doing right now is I luckily found some sandpaper. Thought I didn't have any. We're just going to sand off these contacts on these spark plugs so we can... Make sure to get a good connection. Um, if the, assuming the coil and the points are halfway good. Just cranked it over and uh, cylinder three still isn't getting any compression. I'm almost positive that the valve is stuck open. We'll still run on five out of the six. At least pull one of them out and let it lay it in there. At least a couple of them. I don't know. And crank it over and see. This whole menagerie going. We got the 12 volt battery that we're using for the starter only, not for the rest of it. We got our 6 volt battery that we're using to power up the coil because uh, the, the truck has to run off of 6 volts. So we got it hooked up and uh, we're going to see if we're getting spark. Yeah. Yeah. I think I hear it. It's hard to see because it's light, but I can hear ticks. You ready? Oh, hold on. <laughs> What's the matter? I accidentally had one of those wires off. All right. You ready? Yeah. Are you pouring enough gas in it? I don't know. For some reason, once they've set for a while, it seems like it takes more gas, more than what you think. Yeah. For some reason, I don't know why that is. Hold the, the throttle all the way open. stuck open. Yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Open up that throttle. Come on. Maybe it'll spin over a little better now. Uh-oh, what popped? I so don't know. Come on. There you go, there you go. Hmm, almost had it. Oh. Stop, stop, stop. Almost. Ready? Yeah. Give her a whirl. Ooh. 
See if you can give it acceleration. Ready? Yep. Hold on. So we had to get the Cummins involved, my 12 volt battery, because the battery we brought is going dead. And I think we're fighting two things. Uh, that six volt spark, um, that six volt ignition system, and low compression. And it's it's kind of getting light, but it still can't get light enough to not need the starter, so. some gas. You gotta work the throttle, buddy. I am. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm doing in here. You gotta work the throttle, buddy. <laughs> Took the spark plugs out for one last time, uh, cleaned them up with some sandpaper. They were pretty fouled out, put them back in, and uh, we're going to give it another go. Going to have to mess with those cables. I'm going to go ahead and pop the cap off of this distributor and inspect the points. They're probably dirty. I don't think we're getting really strong spark. So we had the cap off and I cranked it over and uh, the points were opening and shutting and I sanded both sides of the points. So we're going to clip this back on and um, <clears throat> give her another whirl or two. There you go. Sparking. Nah? We had a bad connection at the alligator clip on the coil. So now we're getting spark out of the coil. Go ahead. Let me get the fuel pump going. Pour some gas down it. What happened? Uh, let me look at this spark again. Do it. Yeah. Sparking. It's real weak, but it's sparking. Right. Definitely is. So close. It's close. It is so close. Like, mm. all right. This is pretty much our last effort. We were able to get a 12 volt coil. You got gas in it. 
Well, I sprayed some brake clean. Yeah. And pour some gas down. Alright guys, so we weren't able to get it running. We're fighting a couple things. We're fighting low compression on the cylinders that have compression and two of the cylinders were completely dead. We we're 100% sure the valves are stuck open because it was also popping through the carburetor. The fight might not be over yet. I think Joe will let us come back out there and I think if we bust the head off, pop the valves back down, make sure they're all working and then put the head back on and it would probably run. So the story on the 1949 Dodge might not be over yet. If you like and subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and some feedback, we always appreciate that. And our PO box is now open. I'll put the uh, address to that right here. We'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye. And to our dedicated followers, our real dedicated followers who've stuck this far, even though we said goodbye, I want to give you an update on the 1960 El Camino. I uh, haven't put a video out on that in a while, but uh, in the downtime, my dad's been working on this, doing the metal work and whatnot, and I want to show you something pretty major that you guys are going to be pretty impressed with. This fin was completely crunched in. I mean, absolutely destroyed. There's nothing you're going to do with that. So if you remember, we got this entire back section with it. This is a, it's turned over on its side. That was the wheel well, and this is the back. That's the gas door right there. Right there, that's the gas door of it. So what my dad did was we put this to use, or he put this to use, cut it off, and here's the old piece. And there's the new one. I mean, that is, that's pretty flawless right there. That is really cool. I mean, you cannot even tell besides the bondo where it was seamed cut it off welded it in bondoing it up sanding it making it look i mean like it never even happened from this to that this was completely rusted out the rockers were completely gone or no i'm sorry not the rockers the rear quarters here behind the wheel well this was gone and dad was able to uh weld a new piece in here but it's kind of cool how we got that curvature in there. And I'll show you over here. This door right here is for a 55 Oldsmobile? 56? No, 55. 55. So the curvature of this door is what dad cut out to use as that rear quarter there. I know what you're thinking. You guys love these old cars, you guys are purists, you guys are love originality, why would you cut that nice door up? It's totally against your guys' principles. We don't make a practice of cutting up nice parts from old 50s cars, we do everything we can to save them. Those doors are off of a four-door car, my dad tried for months and months and months to sell them. Nobody wanted them, nobody wanted to buy them. We're never going to restore a 55 Oldsmobile. It's either scrap them or repurpose them, and we chose to repurpose them. Dad's got this door on the block and he's gonna use it for, yeah. It's gonna go here on the other side where this rear quarter was rusted out. But wait, there's even more for even more dedicated followers. This is the truck that sort of put us on the map, the 46 International. I still get comments about this truck all the time. Are you gonna do another video on it? When's another video coming? We put our last video out on this truck months ago, but this truck is like a phenomenon. We love this truck, it's really cool. We plan to do another video on it. A little sneak peek, the last video ended and we hadn't put a gas tank in it. We figured out a fuel system for it. We're in talks with a subscriber right now who contacted us about a door and some other parts we need. But we're in desperate need of a driver's side door. See these shackles on the uh, leaf springs? These are almost rusted completely through. That's unsafe. Um, 
We need the shackles for the rear leafs. We need a few front suspension parts. We need a driver's side drum and backing plate for this truck like you wouldn't believe. But we love this truck. We think it's really cool. We want to show it. We want to show more of it to you guys, but we're just waiting until we can find some uh, parts. So we want to show more of this truck to you guys, but we're trying to find some parts to put on it so we can make it at least somewhat safe. We were able to get an abandoned title for it, which is fine. You can still register, insure, and drive a vehicle on an abandoned title. That's fine. You know, and just to update you dedicated followers who love this truck, who have been following since this truck, I don't want to leave it open-ended. Uh, we still have it in the back of our mind, you know, just to throw it out there. If you have a truck in Arizona, it's going to be getting hot soon, so maybe a little more northern Arizona now. A few subscribers have reached out to us with their possible Will It Runs. Uh, we're looking for pre-1980 abandoned vehicles, um, not vehicles like in a driveway or a, or a backyard of a cookie cutter neighborhood. I'm talking like abandoned in the desert, like that hasn't ran in 20 years. Uh, if you have something like that, please hit me up. My email is right here. We are in Tucson, so within two, three, 400 miles of Tucson would be preferable. And we also really like first gen Dodge Cummins. If you have, we're looking to, we would love to do a fly and drive this year. If you have a 89 to 93 Dodge 12 valve Cummins, it's like abandoned, sitting somewhere 10, 15 years, you're looking to sell or do something with, please let us know at the same email. All right. Now, we'll see you guys in the next one.